Good afternoon, everybody. This is Ricard from The Real World Show. Shout out to everybody that's been watching. Shout out to everybody that's been supporting. Shout out to everybody that has been coming on the show thus far. Um, we have a special guest here with us today. Two special guests. Introduce yourself, gentlemen. Um, my name is Caleb Charles from Hebron, SDA. Um, just come out here to show love um, on The Real Word. Um, I'm excited to be here, and I can't um, wait to have some, you know, nice discussions. <laughs> Introduce yourself, young man. And I'm Rud Gallus and from Hebron as well. Uh, yeah, I just came out here to show love to I remember I was here in, in January. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that's a, and I, I'm back for a second time, of course. Love the show. So shout out to Hebron. Hebron in the house. Happy. We in there happy. Yeah. What is it? Hebron, you know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know. You know. <laughs> so shout out to everybody that's watching. Shout out to everybody for supporting. Um, shout out to everybody that checked out our website. That's www.therealwordministriesinc.org. That's therealwordministriesinc.org. Shout out to everybody that follows us on Instagram at the Real Word Ministries Inc. on Instagram. That's the Real Word Ministries Inc. on Instagram. Shout out to everybody that follows and likes us on Facebook. That's the Real Word Seven on Facebook. That's the Real Word Seven on Facebook. We're also on YouTube at the Real Word TV. One word on YouTube. That's the Real Word TV on YouTube. And we're on television every um, Wednesday, Thursday, and sometimes even Tuesdays on the Brick Network. Check your local cable listings. Um, so, gentlemen, we welcome you to to the show today. We're happy that you're here with us. Um, Caleb, I think you came on the show last on the second season, so it's been a while. It's been it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, good to be back. Yeah, it's, good, to be it's back. good to have you back. Um, Sanders couldn't be here today. The schedule doesn't permit him to be here anymore, but we're still going to continue the show and make the best of it. So I thank all the guests for continuing to come and all of the people that still continue to watch. We thank you all for test, test, test. Um, staying here with us and all the support that you has given us thus far. Um, so, gentlemen, we're going to talk about a lot of different things. First thing we want to talk about is something that's been in the news recently, um, Jeff Espin. Um, he was found killed, supposedly, in a uh, New York City prison, and a lot of people are not buying it. They feel like um, there's some kind of conspiracy because of, I guess, his high net worth and also the people that he's associated himself with. Some people feel like he was actually... Um, set free and some people feel like um, that it was a cover-up but some people feel like there was also a hit on him. So what do you guys think about that? Um, um, to my knowledge, you know, I, I really didn't follow that story too closely. However, um, from what I understood is that this gentleman on this F scene was um, trafficking women yeah. who were underage. Um, and, you know, when you were in a certain circle with certain um, a financial status, you know, you hang around certain people. And um, I believe there's two types of justice systems for one for black and brown people and those who don't have the resources to have a good lawyer. And there are some who are above the law in some degree and have a lot of connections and have a lot of money to support them. Um, in this case, um, from my understanding, this gentleman was found, um, I'm not sure, or he was held without bail or some sort of like, something yeah, like that, where he had, he had to be reprimanded to jail. And, um, you know, ultimately, I personally feel that he was the fall guy, because to my understanding, mm -hmm. um, this gentleman had to pretty much give information on his friends and the individuals who um, he, he, I guess, Work with, yeah, and um, transporting these young ladies. Um, so if you know, he was a high end pimp, basically, you know, that's okay. that's all he was—a high end pimp to the rich and the famous and the powerful. And mm -hmm. he had a little black book. Um, one of the things that he was notoriously known for is that he had secret recordings of a lot of um powerful people, including um princesses and princes, um the uh, ship, um, I said the ship log, um the airplane log of his plane. He had a private plane show that Bill Clinton was on. He's playing a couple of times in a year, and that flew to his private island. Um, he also had a, a picture in his um, mansion in his study of Bill Clinton in a in drag, hanging on the walls of his house. So a lot of people are that relationship. Like, why is this guy that's, that's doing these things? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, it was a fact. Yeah, I, I think all this feeds into the shadiness of, of politicians. You yeah, know? unfortunately, it shows you how uh, how politicians. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, 
you know, we, we know that was always the case because when you're running a political campaign, you need donors. And, Absolutely. And of course, you know, most of their donors are, you yeah. know, shitty yeah. people, obviously. Yeah. Money is question, money. Question will pass. You know, right, you need people right. With deep pockets. And, and those are the individuals who ultimately um, see the benefits from these, these individuals in office. Um, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. They just want our votes, but at the end of right. the day, um, they're going to pass legislation which um, benefits not us, but those yeah. who have the deep pockets. That's you right. know, protect yeah. their investment, protect their income, and ensure that they are able to have that generational wealth and pass it, you know, pretty much, and we will continue to be, um, you know, the afterthought. Pretty much, and if they feel like if there was a coin here or there, some crumbs here or there, <laughs> and uh, you know, we'll you know we'll put a smile on our face because now we get a little extra money in our income tax or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Oh, they did a great job, but these individuals get millions, exactly. <laughs> you know, um, on a daily basis. So um, unfortunately, I think this, this gentleman was, um, you know, he was just too important to survive, and mm -hmm. you know, I guess too much of a risk. Yeah, that um, you know. I don't know if he actually killed himself. Um, it is very uh, suspicious, but um, at the end of the day, you know, that's between that those four walls. I'm not sure if they have cameras in there. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Well, so, supposedly they, they they didn't have cameras in the spot that he was located. Um, what's even more suspicious is that he tried to kill himself a week before or a few days before they took him off suicide watch. Mm -hmm. um, the guards that were supposed to be guarding, that were supposed to do rounds every 30 minutes, supposedly they fell asleep right. and they falsified the logs where they were supposed to um, check. Um, the warden of that prison, of that jail, was moved to a different location and those guards were suspended for a certain amount of time. So a lot of people see it as being suspicious. Um, in regards to what you were saying that they throw us a, a couple crumbs nowadays, it would seem like they always say that black people are more so on survival mode and that's why it's difficult for us to to build that generational wealth or to even um, see anything outside of the four walls. Um, yeah. we, have a, we, have this, um, we have this victim mentality most of the time where, okay, we're here because of this, we're here because of that, or um, no one gave us anything or we started off late, that's why we're here where we at. But then at the same time, like, this is America. As in like, yeah, yeah they build a lot of um, barriers to hold us back, but at the same time, like, we could learn the system that they're using against us and empower our people if we wanted to. Right. Well, you know, I, I don't think we should blame ourselves too much because the impact of black debt, you know, or, or of black people being at a disadvantage is, is due to, like we were just talking about earlier, institutional racism. Um, you know, if you take a black kid and you take a white kid, you know, they have different statuses, right? For example, if I take a white kid, you know, your parents, um, the parents is investing in that kid, right? The family's kid is investing in that kid. So, you know, you have college funds for them. You have, you know, funds for their birthdays and, and stuff like that. I, I, I think in the black community, we, we need to invest in our children and we, we need to think about investing in our children's children right. um, because that's how you build generational wealth, right? It's not about, you know, just going to work, working all your life, then you retire and then you die and then you leave your kids nothing, right. you know, so. Uh, I mean, that, that's, a, that, that's, that's a key point. Um, I feel that, um, once again, you know, we, we shoot ourselves in the foot because we are constantly being entertained and constantly being influenced by what's out there. Mm -hmm. um, individuals with money have fun and sell it as being celebrated on television, mm -hmm. Instagram, you know, all types of social media yeah. platforms. And, you know, That's it, not it, their mindset is for the right now. Yeah. You know, and like I mentioned before earlier, um, that, you know, it's, it's sad, but statistics shows that um, it's, it's a large percentage of individuals who don't even have a thousand dollars in their account. Mm -hmm. And you can't do anything with that. But, um, you know, we do have to do the work, um, which I think you was alluding to in regards to reading and understanding and watching how these individuals who are successful move. Yeah. You know, oftentimes we see a lot of memes of individuals who have a lot of money, you know, um, the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world, 
um, and you look at their shoes and what they're wearing, and it's not. Like, what are those? Yeah, right. It's pretty much <laughs> in that pretty much in that category. Yeah. And um, you know, we're not really taking notes because we want to be seen. We want to show that we have the money. Yeah. We want to look rich but be poor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Look rich, be poor, continue to struggle, and then you know, unfortunately, our, our children suffers because we don't equip them with the knowledge or the resources, the resources to yeah. understand the game pretty much mm -hmm. and how to survive and play this game um, that, we that we're in pretty much at this point. Um, but, you know, it takes time. It takes, um, you know, people to take a step back and look and um, realize what am I doing? What am I doing to my kids? Right. You know, how am I um, pretty much uh, stopping my kids from growing um, in the world where um, not, like, not even that. Like just, I'm just leaving them in the world unequipped, pretty much with their hands open. Because mm -hmm. they're, they're one step away, one crisis away from being poor. Right, like really, right. Really, really um, submerged in debt and submerged in finances, and where, you know, they could end up in a shelter, whatever the case may be, which I don't yeah. hope anyone ends up. But, you know, the reality is, like, um, I know right now, you know, the market shows that we are leaning towards a recession right now. Oh, yeah. So we're definitely going to be in a tight situation soon and you know a lot of people are not privy to that a lot of people are not looking um and at the same time i feel the urban community doesn't have the resources or the outlet they feel like um my little hundred dollars is not enough compared to someone dropping twenty thirty thousand right. dollars into an account mm -hmm. um there is a lot of resources out there that people can begin with yeah twenty dollars ten dollars and that continue adds up every check. Every check you continue to save that little bit of money, and you watch how that would grow. You know. Now, my my friends and I, well, my best friends and I, we've been talking about investing, right? Um, you know, I, I think I, I was pretty excited when when I found out, you know, a month ago that I was going to be covering real estate investing, okay. and the, yeah, they they were pretty excited too because. You know, for a while now, we, we were talking about buying a property and managing a property. And, um, you know, you know, we, we uh, subscribe to Investopedia, you know, and everything where we learn about, you know, investing terms and, and, and um, you know, and we discuss it amongst each other. And, and lately, I've just been teaching them everything that I learn, you know speaking to institutional investors every day and fund managers and, and brokers um, sort of about what they're seeing in the different markets that are that are emerging right now um, and uh, you know the education part is so important you know if if an investing if you don't know what you're doing <laughs> you're just basically wasting money and uh, you know and what you were saying basically putting some money aside you know you, if your job has a 401k, right? right. Let's say you make fifty thousand dollars a year, and you know you're putting off uh, uh, three thousand dollars out of out of you know uh, out of that fifty k to to invest. You know, it, it it makes a difference. You know, there are a lot of ways to invest with a small budget. You got crowdfunding, right? In real estate. You know, there are a bunch of, of basically crowdfunding um, platforms that allows people with like small um, net worths or like small budgets to, to invest. Um, because traditionally, you know, investing is for accredited investors, basically right. high net worth individuals right. and institutions who have, you know, massive, you know, capital. Yeah. So for if, people that have decent <laughs> income and that don't have high debts. Like someone that makes between, I would say between seventy and a hundred thousand, they're uh -huh. usually the angel investors. Like someone to invest into a uh, like a small startup company. Yeah. And when that company blows up, that's when they make a lot of money. Well, angel angel investors are are still accredited because yeah, to yeah. be to be an accredited investor, you need to have a certain amount of you know income or net worth. Um. So for for low income people that are trying to invest, you know. You could do it through your job. I know at your job, if for some jobs, if you invest a certain amount of money out of your income, they match it, right? Um, some some jobs match like half of it, um, which is you know, which is still something. But um, if if you're gonna invest in a four hundred one k, try to invest the amount where the company is going to match it, because you know that's that's more money for you 
Um, crowdfunding is a, is a great way to do it. Not just crowdfunding in, in real estate. You know, black people, we talk about you know, supporting black businesses. A lot of these black businesses, uh, traditionally as a startup, when you're raising money to start you know, a, a small business, uh, you have to get it through uh, venture cap. You have to get venture capital funding. And, and in venture capital funding, um, it's very biased. You know, it's, it's favored towards white men, a little bit towards white women, but very little to, you know, minorities, you know, especially black women. Oh my gosh, only 2% of venture capital funding goes towards um, black women. But there is, which sucks. there is a lot of grants for um, minority female business owners. Not right? a lot of grants. Public funding, public funding, you know, offers grants, but that's, that's through the city or the state. And yeah. the process is, is it's not... Long. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> it's crazy. It's very frustrating. You got to do a lot of stuff. You know, uh, they're like, send us an email. You wait two years to get an email back. And it's like, I, I want to start my business now. How can I get the funding now? So, you know, crowdfunding through small businesses by black entrepreneurs in our communities is a great way to start because they're actually bringing in revenues like black entrepreneur black women especially are contributing billions of dollars to, to the economy so um you know so invest in, in, in small businesses is it's good we yeah. could invest Absolutely. in each other man. i think yes. there's a lot of good um, black owned businesses out there mm -hmm. um however there's a lot of stigma behind some black business owners yeah. who unfortunately mm -hmm. are not consistent mm -hmm. and do not receive the same quality and care unfortunately um, um to their to their um customers you know that they may receive going elsewhere um, you know, I've, I've heard people say, you know, they don't open on time. You have mm -hmm. a lot of people waiting out there, yeah. you know, and, um, Shout out to Jamaican restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, um, sometimes the attitude is not one that's customer service, you know, oriented. Um, but, you know, for the most part, um, we do have to make a conscious effort to, um, try to support the local small minority owned businesses because, mm -hmm. you know, I know right now with this whole real estate boom, everything everybody's trying to buy a small square in Brooklyn yeah. right now. Yeah. Every little grass is probably up for sale, yeah. and you got to pay X amount of money, which pushes the pressure on uh, black owners or owners in general yeah. to raise their prices, to raise their because their rent is being raised. Ultimately. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. So they have no other choice but to pass that on to the to the um, the customers. Right. So. Um, you know, we we, we have to um, really invest in us ultimately. But at the same time, the, uh, uh, hopefully, because I'm I'm not sure if they are doing it, but hopefully, the black business owners are investing back in their own community as well. Mm -hmm. You know, of the time they take the money, they're gone. <laughs> but, um, you know, and then, but at the same time, we don't complain when the you know the when we go to certain restaurants in the hood. I'm not gonna. Say any, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But we go to certain restaurants in the hood and you get a little chicken wing and french fries, whatever. These individuals never threw a block party for us. Yeah. They never um, had a back to school type of situation for us. Not, not yeah. that, you know what I'm saying? Because ultimately, they don't even hire. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't even see any black individuals or brown individuals in the back in the mm -hmm. kitchen or anything like that. Yeah, you know, so they come into our neighborhoods. They take all of our dollars mm -hmm. and, and they leave. And they invested leave. in their neighborhoods. They leave. Yeah. They leave. Yeah. So. You know, we have to break that cycle, um, you know, and I, I, you know, and I'm concerned because I'm not sure this generation is really into that mm. because, you know, they're more internet heavy mm. purchase, pur purchase, mm. uh, purchasing, um, you know, Through different Uber items. Eats and yeah, and this, I mean, even with Uber Eats and stuff like that, there's, there's still um, individuals who ultimately pick up that job that's getting paid too, you know, yeah. mm. but... We just we just a little fish in this big old pond, and you know, uh, you know what, what I've what I've seen, been seeing basically for people who are interested in buying properties. Um, when people think about buying properties, they you know they just look in the areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For example, they just look in New York City, but <laughs> you know uh, there are underserved markets where there is like growing demand for, you know, for. Uh, like multifamily properties or something, because you know, New York basically New York City is a primary market, right? Right. 
and being a primary market, it's expensive Absolutely. to buy, you know, to buy properties here. I mean, at this point, now, mm, yeah, like before the bargaining Bef- yeah. was introduced to Brooklyn, right? Before there's certain developments in Brooklyn, mm. um, I think it was very affordable. Yeah, but you know, individuals missed that boat. Right and now, they're trying to catch up. Yeah, they're trying to catch up. And so it's now, too late yeah, like the price is really, really high. So yeah. So basically, the the common strategy is the value add strategy. Basically, you buy a property that's like you know a little trashy. Right. You know, it's messed up it's inside. Right. You got to clean right. the windows. You got to fix the inside. You know, do a little painting, yeah. and you renovate that property, and then you bring up the value, and then you sell it, right? Or you know, you manage it or operate it, and then. You make the returns on here. If you got funding from anybody, just Everybody. give them the returns, and then you know you start over. You do it all over. But you know, and it's it's too expensive in primary markets. So I, I I mean, for people that are trying to buy properties, I suggest like looking in tertiary markets. Like Virginia is right, a hot right. tertiary Ohio, market right now. Yeah, Jersey, uh, Florida is not a tertiary market right. anymore because you know every. All the people that are retiring are going over there, and, right. and um, Jersey's you know. not bad. South Jersey, yeah, yeah Jersey, Jersey not is not bad. I got a couple. I got a couple of friends that mm. invested some properties out there, right? Kind of affordable rate right, too. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to pull me in at that as well. So I'm doing some more research, mm. thinking mm-hmm. about it. Speaking of the Bark Lane, how everything became more expensive after that, a lot of people mm-hmm. are saying that um, Sean Carter, better known as Jay Z, mm-hmm. um, he sold out Brooklyn, and it's one of the reasons why Brooklyn's so expensive. And a lot of people call him a sellout most recently because of the <laughs> deal he did with um, the NFL. Right. Um, last year, he was trashing the NFL, saying that he doesn't need them, they need him. Um, we're boycotting the NFL, and we're not listening to anything they have to say. He's telling other um, rappers don't perform at the NFL, um, on Super Bowl, and then now all of a sudden, he's now signed a deal with the NFL. And um, come to find out that he's now buying the majority stake in the Steelers for between 100 and 200 million dollars. Um, so a lot of people are, saying, are seeing that as him being a sellout. His justification for that is that um, basically we're not kneeling anymore. Um, why should we kneel and when we could get a seat at the table? And a lot of people saying, oh, so what about Kaepernick? He said, why was Kaepernick kneeling again? So what do you guys think about that? I think he's just using another strategy. I, I, I'm, I'm not opposing what he's doing. Because the kneeling, what did it do? What, Kaepernick lost his position in, in the NFL. He's, he was a very talented player, too. He didn't lose he, his he, position, though. He, he walked away from the job to go into the open market to see if he could get more money. He was, well, no team, no team wanted Kaepernick on you know, part because, of their franchise. Because of the negative so, stigma to right, him at the time. Right. He was basically using their platform to promote his platform to promote his ideas basically mm-hmm. it's almost like if someone come into the show right and then we're doing the show and then we're talking about what, what, whatever we're talking about and like okay no let's promote this let's promote a certain religion like okay guy um but this is the real word like we want to include everybody we don't want to alienate one person like no this is what i want to do kaepernick was yes kaepernick was saying that he was going for social justice and police brutality but why he sued the NFL? Why didn't he sue the police department? Listen, man, I, this is how I think about it, right? Imagine when you were little, right? One of one of the guys, let's say at your church, took one of your toys, mm-hmm. right? They're, they have guys that are bigger than you. What you're going to do is you're going to call your dad or your mom, right? Okay. Have them come get your toys back. Yeah. But if a, your mom or your dad can get your toys back, right, you got to get some friends to come help you get your toys. But if you don't have any friends to come to help you get your choice back, you're going to have to join them. Yeah. Right. Um, and so, so you know, joining you? them and becoming a part of them and then get your toy and then decide what you want to do from there on. So, But Jay-Z had enough toys, so it wasn't about toys. Listen, man, it's... it's <laughs> But you know, it's you never know, bad to get more toys. I, all right, so <laughs> I, I I look at this whole situation, and I um, you can look at it two ways. You know, mm-hmm. he's a sellout. You know, take that lane, or like you know, he's trying to f- get a seat at the table yeah. to create change. You know, um, well, I, what change can he create at a halftime show? That's entertainment, right? So you also said that he um, has an opportunity to be a majority stakeholder in the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Okay. And, um, you know, you st- if you have majority owner, I think you can go to, like, these owners' meetings and have the discussions and um, pretty much um, enlighten 
those owners because these are individuals who do not look like us, who do not mm-hmm. understand what we've gone through. And Jay Z, you know, um, he's been there, done that, and he's become successful in mm-hmm. his own right. Now, to sit at a table with these individuals, you have a voice now mm-hmm. in the back room. Now, yeah. the back room is was always like you know, sorry to say, no blacks, no, you know, yeah. whites only, pretty Come much on, at the man. end of the day, yeah. you know, but. You know, now if you allow this gentleman to go in, you know, everything starts with a baby step. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So right now it looks bad because the optics, you know, he's sitting mm-hmm. at the, the, the commissioner and he's yeah, talking. So now he's a seller. If, he's one right, of them. As, as if like the, the, the commissioner has his hand in his back. Mm-hmm. Like a puppet, like hey, say this and then calm these people down. But, but that's how it's always been with black leaders. Right. I was right. shopping, Jesse Jackson, Barack Obama, TDJ. But uh, <laughs> Jay Z hasn't given us any reasons to not trust him. Right. I mean, the guy has been he supportive. Not? He's been supportive of the black community. No. And can we honestly say that? This is the same, his... same guy that sold crack for 26 years to allegedly, the black community. Allegedly, allegedly. allegedly he said so himself. <laughs> and gotta, it, he's also the same. Black guy that when he was the president of Dev Jam, he he fired all of the conscious rappers and hired all the the dope dealing rappers, quote unquote, like Rick Ross, Young Jeezy. Push that agenda. Yes, to push well, the, the man is a businessman first. He's not Absolutely. a businessman. He's a businessman business business first, man. and then you know you throw in a little, you know, social activist in there, you know, to to get a good look. That's almost like the drug dealer that sells drugs to the neighborhood but gives out free turkeys. During Thanksgiving, or that mm. gives toys to the kids, but that's poisoning the whole community. At least in yeah. Iraq. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah, but, you know, um, is that again, what the guy from to, America to, Gangster did the same thing? Just, just, to, just to go back, um, I think that him being in the, at the table, having a seat at the table, is big. Yeah. Also, I think that we, you know, if if you if you and um, if you had to give a percentage of how many how much black people is in the NFL right now. What would your percentage be? It's a very small percentage. Like no, no, how many black players? I'm sorry, players. Black players. Oh, probably 90%. I would 90%. Have so why can't we create our own? They can, but... Okay, I'm going to give you a perfect example, right? Um, Let's just talk about the comment from Moise. Shout out to Moise. Um, he said, are all black people working in the NFL sellouts or are all the black athletes sellouts? I said, yeah, they're sellouts because they're doing a certain job for... The price. Perfect example is when a lot of people were kneeling. Some people was like, I'm not kneeling. I have a family to feed. Why would I do that? So they just didn't care. They were just like, and they asked a lot of people, would you kneel? Like, no, that's a distraction. I'm not going to. Um, the guy from um, the Dallas Cowboys, the quarterback, he, he basically did Kaepernick. What was his name? I can't remember his name. Not, not Romo. No, not Romo. The, the um, one that's quarterback right now. The current one. Yeah. Um, I think Zach. Prescott or something? Yeah, Prescott. Exactly, mm-hmm. Prescott. He's, he said the same thing. He's, um, he's, um, that's not my fight. So, right. and what were you saying? What was your question? I forget. No, no. So, I'm saying that there's a certain percentage of black players in mm-hmm. the NFL. I would say just 90%. Like, just, right. I'll say 80 so, to 90%. So, you have mm-hmm. that and you have um, people who love to see. Um, let's just put it out there. Black individuals, when it comes to athletics, they're a, a bit supreme, mm-hmm. superior than the others, right? Because right. of slavery. Okay. Breeding, uh, <laughs> breeding <laughs> big strong black. No, breeding big but, black strong people mm. for years. But but what I'm saying is that just like the blacks. big three, I don't know if you watch basketball, but right. the big three came out with their own league mm-hmm. and is becoming very successful so, as well. Yeah. So now, so now, what um, Ice Ice Cube yeah, Ice Cube, Cube yeah. Ice Cube did yeah. was he created a, a new lane and a new um, a new niche for basketball. That people can still watch and it still can compete with the NBA, but not on the same level. No, not yet, the same level. But yeah. it's getting there. Yeah, of it's, course, it's definitely getting there. Mm-hmm. Now um, they got all the washed up players from the NBA. Not, mm-hmm. But some are not necessarily watch. It's still, yeah. it's still entertaining to watch. Yeah, yeah it's still cool. entertaining to watch. It's yeah. like, yeah. Like, I, mean, I, I think, I think Nate Robinson is still NBA worthy. Well, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But you know, he, and some people say he was he was blackball as well because he still has the talent to still play in the NBA. No. But what I'm saying is that we have the. The, the buying power like ball four to, of his, to, to support of his our own league, you know? And my, my thing is, would that ever happen? I'm not sure if we can unite and really put up the capital to support our own. So mm-hmm. let me ask you a question, right? We had our own basketball league, the I mean, baseball league, the Negro League, right? And once the MLB started letting black people win um, with um, 
Jackie Robinson and all the rest, then they all stopped go participating in the Negro League, and then the Negro League eventually died out, and then all the blacks went to the MLB, and then when the MLB found out that they could hire brown people for cheaper than black people, they went and hired all the brown people, and now most black people was like, why would I wait um, like eight to ten years to go to the majors? like the brown people are doing and now you see all these hispanic people in in major league baseball now and a lot of the blacks are no longer in major league baseball but we don't no. but, but now we don't have our negro league anymore so our people been selling out this is not this is nothing new once the check is 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 right we out you know and in regards to football football is very expensive to play and the way they have this whole game manipulated a lot of people don't know that the nfl is a non-profit organization so it's, it's, it's like it's like it's, it's like the league itself is a non-profit organization and then the teams are individually owned and that's why they call it a league it's like a yeah. league of billionaires that mm -hmm. just pay people to play and then they hire a non-profit to organize the whole thing so it's, it's, it's almost their personal racket well the problem is is where, where you said 90 percent of the players are or black right it's, or color, let's yeah. say yeah 10 percent or or white but when you Mostly look on the management side or, or the ownership side, 90% are owned by what? White men. If yeah. Jay-Z buys so, the 5% uh, in the Steelers, he'll be the first black person that owns that much percent of a team. And that's only 5%. In the NFL? Yeah, in the NFL. And that's only 5%, so, so imagine. So, you know, with, with the whole selling out... Uh, yeah, he's he, buying 5% for 200 Yeah, it's, it's very slim. <laughs> um, but I, I I don't think it's it's that simple with the with the selling out. I think it's important to get a seat at the table, um, you know. And as you know, as minorities, you know, traditionally we have to we had to force ourselves into places, right? Um, but you know, we we, we need a football team though, because the Carolina Panthers just sold for I think one point six billion I think recently, mm -hmm. and it's the the guy that used to own the five percent that Jay Z trying to buy. He just bought. The Carolina Panthers. Remember, um, P. Diddy was saying that he wanted to buy the Carolina Panthers, but he don't got one point six billion. No, so he was capping. All right. <laughs> Once you again, know. if we come together, we, we should be able to mm -hmm. um, create some type of capital. And, mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, like, we don't trust each other. So, right. So, if yeah. I give my money to this fund, who's to say is really going to get to that? that destination to get to that end point right. where it's going to be used for what we all sat down and agreed it's but why to be yeah absolutely. there's there's no trust there's no trust there's no between trust you know you know it sucks i mean you look at every community. other nationality um you see how they operate you know they have their own small town and they, and they support each other with their own stores and whatnot and the minute we have our own stores um, it's not supported. I understand that we don't have the capital to have the aesthetics as other restaurants may have, but we still can, you know, we still can assist even with the leadership of those restaurants or with the leadership of those businesses. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of young black people who are professionals in marketing, professionals in um, designing and whatnot who can sit down with their owners and pretty much come up with a strategic plan to yeah. Say okay, we are here right now, point A, but we're really trying to get to point B by yeah. next year, and then point C by the following year. So, what are the steps and strategy we're going to use and implement to reach that goal? Mm -hmm. You know, that's the goal. So, ultimately, we're about it's my business, it's my money, it's, it's everything's supposed to come to me. Not understand that if I just give you a small percentage, we can grow this. Mm -hmm. You know, we can grow this and make this business successful. We can franchise it. We can do so many things with like a Haitian restaurant. There's a couple of Haitian restaurants who I believe are franchised. I think BB Free Tire is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one at Canarsie. Um, close? Not, not close, Creole. I forgot the name Lock of that. Curl Lock I'm not sure, but it's right uh, there on Flatlands by like 83rd and 84th. This little mm -hmm. strip mall over there where like near the Popeyes and all that stuff is. Mm -hmm. It's like a small, I think Creole, something Creole, I, I forgot. But, the, you know, I've seen a couple of those companies um, in different locations. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel that we need to pool our resources together um, as a black community, but I bring it even closer to even the SDA community because we're pretty much here at SDA. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, try to figure something out because ultimately, you know, if we don't help ourselves or help our people, who's going to really help us? We're going to really step back and look for 
handouts from the government who's mm -hmm. looking out for their boys because their boys are the ones in power though they're the ones that create legislature um i'm not sure if you ever read some of these bills but even the um what bill was that after 9 11 happened mm -hmm. there were certain there were certain funds that was that was to there were some funds that was allocated to certain things but the bills was like 600 pages that they had to read in less yeah. than 24 hours and yeah. have to get passed. Yeah. But if you read the fat, the stuff that's in there, there's like two million dollars go to like mm -hmm. Joe's public. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's somewhere embedded mm -hmm. in here. That's yeah. somebody looking out for their boys to get mm -hmm. their money, you know? Yeah. So we don't have the seat at the table. No, we don't no. have any seats at the no. table in order to get that support or that capital from the from the government. So going back to I what think, James, I just want to add something real quick. I yeah, think with the, with the togetherness and, and then pulling in together, mm -hmm. for that to be successful, we need to stop thinking short term and start thinking long term. Because, you know, with most black businesses, we, we think very short term, right? And to explain it, right, so if we do, we've been doing this for two years, three years, we think that's a long time and it's not working, and we're like, yo, this is not working. I can't do this anymore. And sometimes it's, it's because we don't have the resources. We don't have sustainable resources to keep us going for that long. You know, with people in the white community, you have family pulling in, right? If you can't, yeah, if you can't meet, you know, where um, your, your revenues are not meeting, you know, the, the amount that you need to keep the business running every month, the family could just say, hey, I'm going to loan you $10,000, you know, so, so you could continue your business. But with, within the black community, you don't have that, right? And, and also with the think, thinking long term, when you start a new business, it doesn't succeed right away. Right. No, you know, you're going to fail like over and over and over and over for, for a first, long time. Struggle for the first time. Right. Years. Yeah. And then it's going to get better. Right. Because with experience and with failure comes, you know, comes success. The success Absolutely. is going to come eventually. But I think the, the short term thinking has to stop and, and yeah. we have to be long, long term. We have to have a long-term mindset. Long-term vision. You know, yeah. Long -term vision. To, and that's what I think I explained before when, when I said that we need to come together with these small businesses and those who have the experience and those who have the understanding, the knowledge mm -hmm. to assist these businesses succeed. Um, they need to come together and the business only to be not, not only um, opening, but uh, accept the fact that we need to spend a little bit of money to make more money. So yeah. whether we're receiving that support from individuals who are really genuinely trying to assist and at the same time trying to survive, you know, just mm -hmm. give me a small percentage so I can survive and feed my family because I'm assisting you yeah. and I have my job, I have things to do. So like they say, time is money. So I'm, I'm pouring my time into assisting your business. And as I'm doing that, you know, we look out for each other and we'll, we'll be successful because we're working together. Wow. So I was going to bring up something I was watching Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. Like Oprah Winfrey is a black woman, and at the same time, she owns a lot of businesses. So she's trying to, I guess, diversify her whole portfolio. At, right now, she has television. She has the she has the book club. She has a couple right. other things. She has her own network. Right. And we look at people like Oprah Winfrey, and we say, okay, she's the exception to the rule. Maybe she got lucky. But then we look at other people that's starting from the ground up and there's some people that just don't support them and what they're doing and we got to ask ourselves why we don't support it like we work we're quick to question certain things and some people like okay i don't want to support this person because of this i don't want to support this person because of that like why do you think that is uh, black people like rumors man <laughs> you know whenever you hear a rumor as a journalist when i hear a rumor like unless there are, you know, real sources that are feeding to that rumor. I'm not going to believe anything, right? right? So, uh, you know, we, we need to stop, you know, listening to rumors. We need to stop feeding into the con conspiracy theories because most, most of the stuff we hear online, they're not true. They're made up. Like, people want clicks, right? It, it, publications, they want you to click stuff. When, they, when you click stuff, that's how, you know, they get paid. So, so we need to stop believing in the rumors and, and, and you know, I, I, I think we need to stop ostracizing these people, these high net worth black individuals, mm -hmm. because they worked hard to get to where they had. Yeah, of course. Where at, right? You think about Oprah when she started, she got fired from her first, like, you know, TV job, right? So she had to work to get to where she's at right now. 
we can work. I, I think we, we should use these people as, as examples. We can work to get to where they are right now. And, and with that comes mentorship, um, networking, right? You need valuable connections. There are a lot of significant aspects of, of you know, what you need to do to get to, to where those people are at. And, and, and of course, the mentorship, I think, is the most important part because a lot of us don't know what we're doing, you know. And I mean, everyone's trying to find their way. Yeah, everyone's trying to find their way, but uh, we, we don't know what we're doing. And I think growing and, up and, in, the, in certain neighborhoods, yeah. you, you become paranoid and you just don't trust people. Mm -hmm. you, know, mm. you don't think that they have your best interests at right. hand. So, so why do we trust the other side then? We, we'll trust other races before we trust our own. Why is that? Right. Um, you know, that, that's something I can't, I can't answer because yeah. everyone has their own reason. Mm. And it's probably a subconscious thing yeah. too that's making them lean towards that because um all, all that's whatever you see success you don't see anyone that looks like you and i right you know you always kind of see the people who are at top a certain color yeah you know, mm -hmm. a, a certain gender up there yeah and you know you know so you don't feel like you could obtain or aspire to reach there because there's no one that you know in there so mm -hmm. now even with the go back to the jay-z thing you see someone at the table now yeah now you have individuals who are fighting this i mean don't get me wrong there's are there there's people out there that are, that are cfos and ceos who are african-american who are doing their thing yeah. at these fortune 500 companies yeah absolutely but is this on tv all the time no you know what i'm saying is this being promoted on the social media and stuff like that of individuals who are actually doing it the right way on top of that no, you know, oftentimes you see a black individual who is on top is mm -hmm. in the middle of a scandal. So ultimately, it's like we're never being portrayed as that um, successful and happy-go-lucky individual. And at the same time, you know, those successful individuals may not be in the community to mentor a lot of people so they can be visible to them. Yeah. And they're, now they can like understand, like, oh, you're a CFO, you're a CEO at this company. Okay, cool. Right. You know, um, but at the same time, you know, our... Um, do we really want to spend time with this individual who is working, who is in a corporate America doing their mm -hmm. thing or who have their own business? No, um, I think at this point in time, a lot of people are just fat, fascinated at the whole, like, you know, I want it now type of culture. Like, I yeah. need it now. So short -term if, it thinking. Me, if I can't get a binge by next week for yeah. this paycheck, then I need to do something else. Mm -hmm. And then all the times, I'm, you know, they're doing something illegal to yeah. get that fast. But so, you know, like you said, Oprah, she's been in the game for years. Yeah. For yeah. years. Yeah. For decades. And she sacrificed you know a lot. Like, sacrificed a lot. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, people don't see that. People just see, oh, this Oprah network now. Wow. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. she just got it yesterday. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. that's not the case. She worked her tail off to reach that specific that that particular goal and now she's there now she, you see her she's slowly helping out other no. um and individuals who are inspiring to be on television who are inspiring to write books mm -hmm. who are you know promoting that on her yeah. shows I yeah mean, i think she has a show on sundays my, you know my left to watch is up soul sundays or something like that um you know they, they, she's doing she's, she's doing a lot she's doing a lot and and selfish and you know, and ignorant for people just to suggest that they're that these individuals are not um, trying to give back because they are, and they're probably not doing enough research to see that they are. Because mm. there's opportunities out there, we're just not doing the work. Yeah. We have a few comments from a few people. Um, shout out to Marcia Lewis. She's here with us every week, so shout out to Marcia. Um, shout out to Mike Ishnadi. He said, "Happy and birthday, easy. bro!" Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. Oh, um, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank something. you, thank you. Um, um, Moise, he also said that would we move back to Haiti and rebuild? No. Go back to Africa? No. So he's basically saying that we won't, we won't, we as black people, we don't go back to our original places where we're going to be accepted. We'd rather be in a place and struggle that we're not accepted just to be, it's just to fit in. Again, like we like to look rich and be poor. Um, so, no, I mean, so what do you think? Like. If I understand most correctly, what's up, most? How you doing? Um, if I understand correctly, I think he's just saying that you know um, we don't want to help our own, you know. Yeah. And oftentimes, there's a lot of Haitian individuals, but you know, it's tough because for me, I, I think it's tough because um, why? For for me, a person who is Haitian American, born here, raised here, I never actually been back to Haiti. 
Um, my parents put the fear of God in me not to go to Haiti, you know, wow. uh, for whatever reason, um, obviously for safety reasons. No. But, um, you know, but sometimes you look on YouTube and you see other individuals walking through the streets and finding issues. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, I'm getting a mixed <laughs> message saying not to go, but then I see these individuals <laughs> don't even look like us yeah. out there wow. with, their, with their backpacks getting on, you know, taxis and, yeah. and those motorcycles and the, the tap taps is chilling, yeah, you yeah. know, and I'm like, why can't I go, you mm. know, but um, for whatever reason, you know, um, and then we also see and hear of a lot of stories where um, people are not honest out there. So you, you try to send some money or you try to go there and rebuild and you end up getting killed or whatever you know they put the fear of god in you yeah, not to course. go back and help you know Such so if, there was, if it was easier for i guess certain people to well i guess you, i think you and i have to do research to find out which companies are actually doing the work out there mm-hmm. because even with like the whole the, the 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 whole earthquake in haiti and the whole um relief fund that they received and a lot of the money went less right yeah. kind of unaccountability for the the money that's the mismanagement of money that was sent to haiti mm-hmm. you know um you know so it makes you a little bit paranoid or a little bit afraid to even go deep in your pockets for money that you don't even have at this point in time right. in your life to go and support and help someone else mm-hmm. even I, though it's the, it's the right thing to do you should definitely do it right More i use, think oh i was gonna add to that i think going back to the roots uh there are people that are doing it it's just the impact is not as big or as expected. Um, for example, you take Akon, mm-hmm. right? Akon has been doing a lot in Africa. So West Africa is an area that is, um, that is they, they don't have electricity. I think there are 600 million people without electricity there and, and they need electricity, right, to run their businesses, their local businesses when it's dark. They need the light to sell people stuff. and. And um, of course, they need to charge their phones to talk to each other, to run their businesses. So they need electricity. And Akon was a big actor in providing electricity to millions of people in, in, in West Africa. Yeah. Right. Um, solar energy, right? Right. Yeah. Solar energy, re- renewable energy and all of that. Haiti, Wycliffe has been doing a lot for years in Haiti. I think uh, in, in recent years, he's tried to uh, take a, a political stance. In Haiti, and then that didn't work out well. But you know, he's been do- doing a lot through his foundation. But it's just the impact is not as you know what's what's the word is not as significant as you know we expect he he expected it or you know people expect it to be. But there's still some stuff that's doing it. Right. And 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 the the importance of thinking about these stuff is there are people that are doing the work and. You know, we can help too. This is the part where we come together and pool in capital so we could, you know, help do the work, right? So there are people doing it. Do you believe? Just, I mean, no, at, at this nobody wants to, wants to go first and, 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 you know, and do it. People, people, Moise, I, Moise, Moise, Moise is saying this. Let, Moise, let me know uh, uh, what, what you're doing for Haiti and, and, and then we can not, start not, talking. Not that. It's just more yeah. so like, what organizations are out there? If you have any specific ones that are doing the work, please mm-hmm. drop it in the comment section so we can see it. Right, so we can right. Let individuals know yeah. where to go. Yeah. Because we could talk about this for years, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if we don't have like that, that resource to could, to point mm-hmm. people to go to those sites and to yeah. educate them on how they can be effective in not only Africa. I don't, I don't want to go there yet, but mm-hmm. let's, let's talk about Haiti. Then, yeah. You know, if we can't even assist our people in Haiti. Um, who are African, I get it, you know, but I'm talking about specifically Haiti first. Mm-hmm. Um, if we can get our people together to organize, to, to mobilize themselves and to um, really um, work together to help in the rebuilding efforts in Haiti, then, you know, you know, we, we, we just need to pretty much make it known. Let us, let us know how we can help. Like, what, 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 what resource, what site can we go to to help in the city? Yeah, because we, we could be like, oh, we're going to feed people in Haiti, but how are you going to do it? I mean, feeding Where people are you in Haiti get for one week is, not, is nothing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's just like, yeah. you, you're fishing for them, and you don't te- you're not teaching them how to fish. You know? Yeah, you know, it's, exactly. it's not or, a big or, enough or You're not creating there. and giving them the resources to go be able to go out there and fish, to mm-hmm. have the rod and the nets and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They're doing it right now, and yeah. you know, more power to them. I would love to go out there and help. And if there's any, once again, any... Um, you know, any any type of um, resources you feel that we can promote or assist with, 
please drop it in the comment section. Yeah. Mm. More than, more than willing to to read and understand. <laughs> more is going I into mean, like um um one of the things that I've uh, started doing recently, uh, I, there are, you know, these foundations, <laughs> you know, and, and these like outreach programs where you can, you know, help a child, you know, in like Africa. And, and I think every year I, I donate about $400. $400. I, That's good. You man. know, they, they took it out, out of my account <laughs> a few weeks ago, I think two weeks ago. Four hundred and thirty-two dollars, and basically you're a child sponsor, right? And what you do, here. yeah, What's yeah. What you do, well, it's it's very little if you're thinking about the huge population. Yeah, of course. You know, but if a lot of people are doing it, then it makes a little difference. Mm. But basically, what you do is, you, you know, you help that child get clothes, help them go to school, help them, you know, get food to eat yeah. and everything. You communicate with those children. Uh yeah, they send they send me photos actually. They send me photos and and um you know they usually send these messages to say thank you for your donation. Here's what's going on with like you know Mikel. You know he's in third grade. He's doing this. You know and he. Wait, hold on. Yeah. So it's, let's it's a it's a start. Go to the comments. Yeah, let's go to the comments. Um, so more you said I wish we had leaders to empower us to embrace our land and to have oh to embrace our land and leave the adversaries to themselves um eric jean batty shout out to eric jean batty he's another one that's here with us every week um he said happy to hear mentorship is important then moise now is going off um bringing <laughs> our crush to the conversation so we can be aware how much we depend on the comfort of this country. I'm thinking how much better Haiti would be if we mobilized and moved there. The idea I'm introducing, um, he said, no judgment, guys. And he's also saying we are here in the same boat. Yeah. Is that the banana boat? It, <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds like it sounds like Moise has a lot to say. And it sounds like you are you can be a leader, man. I mean, if you have the idea. Yeah. I mean, and I think, I think for some people, if you've gone there and visited, you know, Gain a sense of like, oh wow, this heritage, you know, and and how Haiti is, and you know, um, the struggle, seeing people struggle to survive, and like you said, the comfort that we have in this and, and where we are right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, <laughs> I think that, um, you know, he's passionate. He, he probably been there several times. Yeah. You know, um, still in contact, but not everyone have not everyone had that liberty or have that experience to really, you know. I, I want to, even though I haven't been there, I want to help and support because I hate He's to the see. Mic, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hate to, I hate to, I feel like I'm talking like that right there. Yeah, I hate to see. Yeah, she just said, use the mic. <laughs> I, I, hate to see, I hate to see people struggling and whatnot. So I apologize. Um, yeah, I hate to see people struggling. So yeah, definitely, if we can help, I would love to help. I would love to go. As a matter of fact, I, I want yeah, to go girl. next year. But, um, but um, one thing, we'll and yeah. one thing, and I'm not just pitching. People forget that the real word ministries is a 501c3 not for profit. I mean, mm -hmm. we're trying to build the same thing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to empower people in Brooklyn, then go to Queens, Bronx, um, places in Manhattan that don't have money, you know, like the um, Lower East Side and Harlem and places like that. And we also, in attempts to even go to Haiti if we had enough funding, um, I, I believe we have somewhat of a, track, of a track record, obviously. And we've been doing a lot of local things. And we got the 501c3 so we could get government grants and funding and to better legitimize ourselves when we're going to try to get and apply for grants. But we're part of the SDA community. We're part of Brooklyn. And there's a lot of people that don't support us, sometimes because of how they feel personally about maybe the members of the, of the company or maybe sometimes people just take two steps back and they see if you... If you fly or if you fail, they they take it personal, right? Yeah, so, it's personal. I, I mean, I, think, I mean, do you reach out to these, um, to other to other companies to kind of like um, work with them to? Yeah, of course, we've worked to with share your vision. Like this is the this is what I want to do, and we know that you know this is a Haitian coalition in this area. Mm -hmm. You know, how am I going to work with them? Individuals who are constantly on the ground fighting for Haiti. You know, how can we work with them? How can we get mm -hmm. some young blood in there? to assist not only physically, but assist planning and um, strategizing different, um, different, 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 um, I guess, different programs mm -hmm. that we can really conduct in Haiti for a certain, for, you know, for, for, for a perpetual, you know, for, for a long time. 
yeah. for a long time. You, you don't want to do it like, okay, I'm doing it this year and then that's it. But mm-hmm. I want to I want to see a comprehensive plan where um, this program is going to be sustained. supported and mm-hmm. sustained mm-hmm. for X amount of years. And, you know, we're mentoring other people to get on board and to take the, the baton and pretty much run with it. Yeah, yeah I mean... I've never been to Haiti since I've left, and I left at a very young age, and since then I've been in America. What I can say is we need funding to even go to Haiti because the plane ticket alone to Haiti <laughs> is not cheap. Um, yeah, it is, it's always good to, to network with other people and work with other people. Um, this Sunday, as a matter of fact, we've been working with um, this company that helps provide schools with computers and laptops at a discounted price. And they have provided us with 6,000 laptops that we're able to sell this weekend for $50. So we're giving away MacBooks. Well, we're wow. not giving them away. We're selling MacBooks for $50. Um, wow. So you get a MacBook for $50. This Sunday um, brought to you by the real word. Um, we also got tablets. It's really big, for, man. That's, for, that's big. Yeah, for back to school. So we got computers, we got tablets, and we got a couple other things that we're giving at a very cheap price. You know, where else would you get a tablet? for forty dollars and a computer for fifty dollars, you know? Yeah. And um the proceeds go to the real word, which is gonna help us to do other things later on in the year, you know, mm-hmm. so we're not just begging for money anymore. Right. We're actually providing you with something yeah. and then that can help you and we're not just giving you a notebook and pen because barely anybody writes on a notebook and pen anymore. <laughs> yeah. So we're trying to, you know, diversify things and do things a little bit bigger and better, you know. Um Officially, we've been on paper since December. We're now in August, and we've been laying down the foundation for the entire company. You know, um, besides the paperwork, we create the website. Besides the website, we got the logo um, trademarked, and you know the legalities of the situation before you're able to really push forward. And you know, I just hope that you guys support us in what we're doing. We're not just um, people behind a camera doing a show live every week you could support especially if you watch the show every week because the show's not free it costs money to produce for you guys um i think it's always good to support people especially people of your own color because other colors do it i feel like it's weird the fact that whenever we say let's support our own people say oh why are you only supporting your own but when other races support their own it's okay because that's just what they do. No. You know? I mean, the and same, I the same like goes for like when we plan our vacation and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, just speaking about Haiti, now I, I know there's a lot of beautiful resorts in Haiti yeah. and whatnot. And um, I'm pretty sure there's some methods you could take to um, keep your family safe in these particular areas, you know. Right. But um, do, we, do, we, do we support like our, our country? Do we support like the, those particular um, resorts out there that they may have? Um, you know, are, are we, are, are, that, that's a way to support. Yeah. And not tourism. What I was going to say is, um, there's been, there's been Caribbean cruises that go to Haiti and they don't let the people know that they're in Haiti. Right. And, um, wow. Bill Clinton and other people, they own resorts in Haiti as well. So there's beautiful parts in Haiti. You got to understand. But it's not going to the people. It's not no, going it's to not going to the people. What I'm saying is. The way the media portrays certain things, they'll portray black and brown countries as always as negative but at the same time us we usually travel we do travel we travel to these spanish countries and we don't go to black countries as often for a while they made um africa seem like it's, it's a bunch of spear chucking people mm-hmm. in the wilderness chasing you or or if as soon as you get off the plane a lion gonna eat you and, mm-hmm. we, and, and we bought that rhetoric and we believed it you know it wasn't until right. recently um, when you see people like Akon and these other people that's promoting Africa like yo Africa's yeah. beautiful what are you talking about it's a modern day country like everywhere yeah. else and then we even forgot that Egypt was in Africa Libya was in Africa um, all these pl- uh, places Morocco was in Africa you know um, all these places and South Africa was colonized by the Germans they took over South Africa you know and they called it Africanus <laughs> so you know this foolishness so you gotta put everything in perspective and no. you know we gotta it, it's the media that's programming these people to think this right. way and it's very right. sad um it's she said up. yeah I look like three chocolates my sister she mm-hmm. said I, I do think that if children of the the spore of black descent and first generation americans whose parents came from countries create a plan to buy property or land back home 
create businesses like resorts or living complexes or went back to build nice houses mm -hmm. that could be used as Airbnbs, we could help make our home island desirable for travel. We could make money, help give our people back home jobs, make them tourism dollars, and we can reconnect with our roots. That's a fact. Absolutely. I remember when I went to... Um, when when I went to St. Lucia recently, um, there was a family business that owned um a, a boat tours. Like they owned the boats, then um they, they would drive you around the island on the boat, and then the and then the boat tour would finish at their house. Then at their house, they feed you at the buffet, and then wow. they make you pay according to your hotel room, and then they send you back to your place. Mm -hmm. So it was like a family business. Um, so we can't do it because it's been done. Yeah. So That's, closing thoughts, gentlemen. Uh, take the time to educate um, yourself on finances. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from time to time again, understand what's going on in the financial wor world, and um, see how that it may and may not affect you. Um, I think ultimately, all financial decisions and anything that we often consider to be boring on um, MSNBC or something like that, and, you know, we do have to take the time to educate ourselves. And to really understand that um, we're we're doing this not only for us but for our, the next generation, the generation after that. So building um, generational wealth doesn't happen overnight. It takes tough decisions. Yeah. Um, it takes a lot of um, discipline on your part and a part of your family. Um, and also, um, you know, always trying to find a way to help back those who are in need, um, especially those in Haiti, in your, from your country. Yeah. Um, from your country, too. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> our country, too, you know. But, um, but definitely, you know, um, you know, you know, support black-owned businesses is it's, it's key. It's like vital. this one? Um, like this one, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, whether it's $10 or $20 you could give weekly or something like that, just a lot of from your check, to support black-owned businesses or to eat food and you know, to and if you have the resources, don't be afraid to go to the business owners in your neighborhood and help them pretty much figure out a way on how to um, expand their business. Um, I think a lot of us, we go to school, we obtain that education and we get that knowledge, we get that experience, but we don't want to give it to individuals who are in desperate need and want to survive, like those mom and pop shots. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. um, we definitely have to try our best to help those in our community as well. And um, yeah, it's pretty much. Um, thank you for this opportunity, bro. Yeah, yeah. Right. and I, I, I'd recommend that people read this book. It's um, Back to Basics Investing by Eric Tyson, and he's a yes. pretty good author. And, yes. and you know, in the investing world, um, and of course, Ricard, I know you tagged us in this video, right? So yeah, if, if uh, you know, if if anybody who's watching this think that my resources could be of any help to them, please reach out. Yeah. You know, to my Facebook up. Budgeting one on one is yeah. the book I'm reading right now. I'll email you back. Yeah. Uh, definitely um, got to keep a book in handy. Yeah. At and, all times. Um, investing is very important because you know. You know, we're so used to working for money, you know, to actively work for the money, you know, but investing the money is actually working for you. Absolutely. And the first Absolutely. step is Absolutely. to educate yourself. Right. Absolutely. The second step is to pay off your your debts, especially your high interest debts. Yeah. Right. Because if you're saving money and you're in debt, you're not saving money. <laughs> you're saving to pay your debt, <laughs> basically. So pay off your debts, right? Student loans before you start investing. Um, I mean, yeah, there's, there's some debt sort of control. There's mm -hmm. something that's not that bad, like mm -hmm. student loans. You know, right, that's, right. That's whatever, but uh, like credit cards, that's the mm -hmm. stuff that's really killing you with the yeah. Yeah. 16, yeah. 17, 21% oh, yeah. interest oh, yeah. rates. You know, yeah. So you definitely want to pay that off as soon as possible, especially those store cards mm -hmm. for the ladies and gentlemen out there who just mm -hmm. continually swipe in. It's, <laughs> you got to keep on doing it. And, you know, and, and you know, growing <laughs> up, growing up, my parents would tell me credit, credit cards are bad and, right. you know, it, credit cards are actually good. That's how you build credit. It's right. just you have to control yourself and you yeah. know how much discipline. you're by, discipline. right? You have to discipline yourself. Discipline yeah. is, is, so is an important goal, aspect man. too. So set yeah, that goal. Set yeah. That goal first, and then do your research, do your homework. Yeah, um, if, there's if, a lot of stuff you get for free on the internet. Mm -hmm, of course, um, there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube that you can yeah. actually watch that will educate you on how to invest and the, the pros and cons of investing. But yeah. the first thing is to do, to set that goal. And then ultimately right. setting a little bit of money aside specifically just for investing. 
um, so that you know you're not hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you still could go on vacations or whatnot, but you still have allocated some funds to an account where you can invest for not only yourself but for your children as well. There's a lot of websites right. out there. I could, I could yeah, Investopedia is a really good good one that I subscribe right. to. They send you like in, you know short articles on like mm -hmm. how to invest on a small budget right. or how to invest in stocks, mutual funds. So that go go subscribe to um, investopedia.com. It's it's really good. Yeah, read the books to watch the videos. Those are those are all very helpful. And and yeah yeah, reach out to me. I breathe. I write. I talk to investors every day. Give you know, me your email address. Like, uh, okay, so I'll, I'll just type my email address in the comments okay, when, sure. after the videos. But yeah yeah, I was in impact investing. Now I'm doing real estate. So I I know a little bit about investing. I I think <laughs> so. Yeah, re reach out to me if you want to know like how to start and and I'll give you some tips on like where to go read articles or watch videos you know to get started all right so we i thank my two guests from for coming on today um rogali and caleb shout out to hebron of course and shout out to the birthday boy yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm getting it. also we have a back to school week of prayer starting wednesday mm -hmm. um to all the way to saturday yeah and we definitely go into coney island on that sunday so mm -hmm. definitely come out starts at 7 30 at hebron, hebron at sda um 12 56 dean street Brooklyn, yes. New York. All right, so um, if you have a chance, definitely come out. Yeah, no yeah, problem. Join us, yeah. So we thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, check out our website, www.therealwordministriesinc.org. That's therealwordministriesinc.org. Follow us on Instagram at therealwordministriesinc. That's at therealwordministriesinc. And check us out on Facebook at therealword7. That's the real word number seven. Check us out on YouTube at The Real Word TV. One word, The Real Word TV on YouTube. We thank you for being here with us tonight, and we thank you for always joining us every week. Um, when you guys want to close out with a prayer? Yeah, let's do it. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for uh, allowing us to come together, Father, to have this conversation. And, and for all those people that are watching, we ask that you be with them, that you send out your Holy Spirit to be with each and every one of them. Um, Lord, allow us to be keen to educating ourselves, Lord, and to helping one, one another in our communities. Uh, thank you for all that you have done and all you will continue to do for us. And thank you for what you're doing with this TV show. We ask that you continue to help uh, Ricard to succeed in it and bless his family and, and his other projects that he is doing for the community. In Jesus' name, we pray for all of this. Amen. 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 And shout out to the Brick Network. Um, you can watch us this Thursday. And thank you all for watching tonight. Good night. We love you. Peace. Yeah.